Hello again scholars, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at Roman numerals at the grade 4 level. All right. So Roman numerals are basically the number system that was used in Rome. Rome is the capital of Italy. At the time when these symbols were used though, Rome was a much bigger place. It was actually an empire. These symbols are no longer used, however, it's good to know, you know, as part of our mathematical tradition, it's good to know the symbols that were used and how we can translate them into our Hindu-Arabic system. The, the number system that we use today is called the Hindu-Arabic system. So, the following symbols were used in the Rome Roman numeral system, or from Rome, Italy. That's how it got its name, Roman numerals. And these numbers here, the numbers that we use now, are the Hindu Arabic system. All right, so let's go. Basically, the numbers, the symbols represent numbers. So the I represents one. V represents 5, X represents 10, L represents 50, C represents 100, M represents 1000, and D represents 500. So it's very simple actually to translate from the Roman numeric system to our Hindu Arabic system and back, vice versa. The for most of the numbers, we use the additive principle. So all we have to do really is to find what the symbol means and combine them for most numbers. So this does not apply to numbers having to do with the digits 4 and 9. So for those numbers having to do with 4 and 9, we use the subtractive Principle. What this means is, once we see a smaller number appearing, preceding the bigger number, we subtract the smaller from the bigger. And I'll explain further down. But for all other numbers, once they don't have to do with the 4s, the 9, 40s, 90s, 400, 900, and so on, we just add. If it has to do with a 4 or a 9, you will notice, so for the 4, we don't write 4 eyes, because if you read what it says, do not use more than 3 of the same symbol at once. So if we were to write 4, we would have to use 4 eyes, which would break this rule, right? So what we do is we write the 4 as 5 take away one. So that would be, remember now, the smaller symbol is preceding the bigger one. One is smaller than five. So this is an indication to us that we are to subtract. We are to take the one from the five. So this is how, how we write four. Here again, for the nine, we have the one preceding the ten. That means we have to subtract 1 from 10. That's how we write the 9. For the 40, same thing. 10 from 50. For 90, 10 from 100. For the 400, 100 from 500. For the 900, 100 from 1,000. And the subtractive principle, just remember, the subtractive principle only applies to the 4s and 9s, 40s, 90s, 400, 900. So once you see the smaller symbol preceding the bigger one, that's an indication that for that little part of the number, you isolate that part of the number and subtract. For every other aspect of the number, we would use the additive principle. So let's go through following these two rules, the 
additive and the subtractive principle of Roman numerals. Let us translate. So we're changing the Hindu Arabic to, sorry, this should read change the Roman numerals to Hindu Arabic. So these are the Roman numerals and we're changing them to Hindu Arabic. Okay. So we have a 10 and you can actually write 10 and we have a 1 coming in front of a 10 which means we subtract so this part of it is 9 so you can actually write 10 plus 9 and that would give 19 okay so I'm going to cross through this because it should read change these Roman numerals to Hindu Arabic okay so they gave us the Roman numeral we're changing to Hindu Arabic so here we have 10 and 5. 10 plus 5 is 15. Okay, pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. Here we have three tens, so that's 30. And we have two ones. 30 plus 2 is 32. See how simple it is? Pretty straightforward. Here we have a 500, we have a 10, we have a 5, and we have three ones. Just put them together. 500, 10 plus 5 is 15 plus 3 is 18. 580. So if you're just getting the knack of it, you might want to write it out like this a little bit at a time, process it a little at a time. And then you put it together. As you become more versed in it, as you practice more and more, you don't even have to do this. Right? You can just go straight in your head as mental arithmetic. 500 plus 10 plus 8. 580. Here we have a thousand. But here now we have the 100 coming before the 1,000. So that tells us we are to subtract for this part. We have a 1,000 and then this part of it is 1,000 take away 100 is 900. So this is actually 1,900. So here we have the 900 principle coming. So if you know, if you know already, CM is 900, you could have just gone straight, 1,900, okay? So let's look over here. We have a 10, but we have a subtractive principle here because 1 comes before 5, so we know where to subtract. 10 plus 4, remember this is 4, and you can study these, you know, because, like I said, only applies to the 4s, 9s, 40s, 90s, 400, 900. So if you memorize, actually if, if you understand these 6, know them by heart, you don't even have to worry about calculating each time. Just, just study these so wherever you see them you will know. So that's 10 plus 4, that's 14. So this is 900. Right? Sorry, it should be. So that's 900. This is 100 take away 10, which is 90. So 990 and 1. 991. Here we have 2,200. 2,000. 200. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Two one thousands, two one hundreds. Here we have a subtractive principle, right? We have 500 take away 100, which we know is 400. So that's 400 and 10 plus 3 ones, 13. 413 and here now 
50 plus 3 tens, that's 80 plus 5. So 85. Alright, so that was changing the Roman numerals to Hindu Arabic. And down here now we're to change the Hindu Arabic to Roman numerals. So that was an error. We're changing these Hindu Arabic numbers, the regular numbers that we use, Hindu Arabic numbers, to Roman numerals. So let's go. So we need 500, we need 40, and we need 1. We know that 500 is D. We know that 40 is going to have the subtractive principle. 50, take away 10, so the 10 will be written first and then the 50, and then we know that 1 is I, right? 286, so we need two 100s, pretty straightforward, two 100s, we need a 50, we have to break up the 80 because we don't have a symbol for 80. So we need to break it up into 50 and 3 tenths, right? So that's 50, 3 tenths, and then the 6 would be 5 and 1. So 286. Now this is 1,293. 1,000. M is a thousand, so one thousand two hundred. We know once we see the nine, we, we're going to have a subtractive principle. Ninety is X C. One hundred take away ten, so that's X C. And then we need three ones, so that's I I I. One thousand two hundred. 93. Once we see the 4, we know we're going to have our subtractive principle. So this is 47. We know that 40 is 50 take away 10. We know we're going to write the 10 first. And then the 50 to show that we're subtracting. Okay. And then, so that's the 47. We don't have a, a, a symbol for 7. But we can break it up into five and two ones. Five and two ones. So that's 47. 13, of course, we can break it up into 10 and three ones. So that's 10. Three ones. 13, 10, and 3 ones. 211, so we need two 100s. The 11 we're going to break up into 10 and 1. All right, so we break that up into 10 and 1. 211. 106, so that's 100. Five and one. If you want, you could split it up just like what we did here. Split it up first into its component parts and then look to see which ones you have symbols for and which ones you have to combine to get the symbol. Right? So here we have 1,532. 1,532. So that's a thousand five hundred thirty would be three tens, and then we need two ones. One thousand five hundred thirty-two. All right. So we have three more to go. Eight hundred and ninety-four. The eight hundred we need five hundred. We need three one hundreds, sorry, sorry, eight hundred and ninety-four. So it's ninety 
we need the subtractive principles. Okay, 800. 90 would be the 100 take away 10. And the 4 would be 5 take away 1. All right, so let's break that one up again. So the 800 would be 500 and 3 100. That gives 800. The 90, we know that's 100 take away 10, the subtractive principle there. And the 4 would be 5 take away 1. 620. So for the 600, we need 500. We need a 100. That makes 600. And the 20 would be 2. Okay, so six, the 500 and the 100 make the 600, and the two tens make the 20. Finally, we have 333. So we need three 100s, we need three tens, and three ones. No subtractive principle there, no fours anywhere in sight. So we, we need three separate 100s, three separate tens, three separate ones. Now which would you prefer? Look at our way of writing the numbers. Do you notice that in most cases, the Hindu Arabic way is the shorter way, it takes up less space. Look at the 333. In our system, we use three digits, three symbols. In the Roman numeral system, we use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine different symbols to represent the same number. Here we have three symbols. Again, eight, four symbols, eight symbols here. So the Roman numeral system was a, a very long way of writing numbers. The Hindu Arabic system uses less digits to represent the same quantities. To recap, the Roman numeral system is no longer used. Well, maybe you still have some clocks <laughs> having Roman numerals on the faces and so on, but as a system, it is no longer used certainly not as widely as it was but so when it was used this was like hundreds even thousands of years ago when Rome was the strongest empire in Europe and a bigger much bigger ge geographical area than it is today so the symbols the I represents one V represents 5, X represents 10, L represents 50, C represents 100, M represents 1000, D represents 500. For most numbers, we simply add. We simply break it up into the symbol that we need and we combine them. For the digits having to do with 4s or 9s, 40s, 90s, 400, 900, we have to use the subtractive principle. So just look out for these. If you know these, you won't have any problem. It's just six of them, really. So you should know them. Wherever you see a four or a nine, just get your mind in that position to do your subtraction. In the middle of the, even if it's in the middle of the number, just break that section, do your subtraction, and, and work the rest. The rest would be the additive principle. So that's basically it for Roman numerals. Remember to practice. And if you have been helped by this video, please share it to your friends so that they can benefit. This is a topic that as simple as it is, some students still find it challenging. So if you are now clear on Roman numerals, share this video with your friends and with your classmates so that they too can benefit from it and be clear as you are. And I will see you next time for another topic.